Hi, and welcome to That's Roddy Mysterious, a podcast of short tales about true mysteries. What happened to the Flannan Isles Lightkeepers? Who was responsible for the Gardner Museum heist? I'm not going to solve those mysteries, but they'll be interesting to learn about. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. Transcripts for all episodes can be found at thatsruddymysterious.wordpress.com. No apostrophe and no exclamation point. Today's tale is about the Tunguska event. On June 30th, 1908, at just about 7.14 a.m. local time in central Siberia, Russia, there was an explosion. The explosion occurred above Pudkamenyaya Tunguska, just around the river. It's believed the explosion occurred at an altitude of 15,000 to 30,000 feet and was visible from about 500 miles away. The huge explosion was equivalent to about 15 megatons of TNT, which is 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb that the United States dropped on Hiroshima in 1945. Witnesses of the explosion reported seeing a fireball in the sky and then experiencing a very hot wind that knocked some people to the ground. The explosion flattened trees for about 500,000 acres. The trees in the center of all this, however, were standing upright, but without any branches and totally charred. Speaking of charring, there was greater than 24,700 acres of charred trees created by the explosion. Immediately following the explosion, there was a noctilucent cloud, which is sometimes caused by dust from a meteor mixing with ice crystals in the atmosphere, and which are at a higher altitude than most clouds, over Europe. The gases left from the explosion remained over Europe and Siberia for some time, leading to abnormally bright nighttime skies. The only likely physical remains of the explosion that were ever found were small fragments less than one millimeter across. For many years, there was no official investigation of the Tunguska event. In fact, the first investigation occurred between the years 1927 and 1930. This investigation was led by Soviet scientist Leonid Alexeyevich Kulik. This investigation found fallen, splintered trees lying radially for 10 to 20 miles from the epicenter. Everything in this area had been scorched and devastated. These investigators found very little regrowth in the 19 years since the event. They said it was easy to find the epicenter of the event because the trees all pointed away from it. They did not, however, find a crater, just a marshy bog at the epicenter. This tells us the event was not an impact on Earth. The investigators interviewed witnesses to the event. Witnesses from some distance away recalled seeing something falling toward Earth. Then, fireball lightning on the horizon, followed by the ground trembling. Then there was a hot wind, great enough to throw people to the ground, shake buildings, and blow out windows, as if in an earthquake. One witness stated the wind was so hot that it felt like his shirt was on fire. Seismographs in Western Europe noted seismic waves caused by the blast. Further investigations were undertaken by Soviet scientists in 1958 to 1961, and by Italian and Russian scientists in 1999. What happened in the skies over Siberia on June 30, 1908? A number of explanations have been proposed. Initially, some thought the explosion had been caused by a UFO or an angry god. The investigations that had been conducted eventually concluded that an asteroid measuring between 150 and 300 feet in diameter and with a stony, carbonaceous composition exploded in the sky. This explosion caused a giant fireball, a blast wave, no impact crater because it didn't impact Earth, and enough radiant energy to start fires. But the blast was big enough to smother those fires, and that's why the trees were charred, but there were no reports of fires. It is common for relatively small meteorites to burn up in Earth's atmosphere. This happens every few hundred years. It was thought that the asteroid that caused the Tunguska event may have been the largest such explosion in recorded history. In 2020, however, some Siberian Federal University scientists released a paper regarding the Tunguska event. 
Based on first-hand accounts and scientific calculations, scientists now believe that the Tunguska event was caused by an iron asteroid that passed through Earth's atmosphere but continued on instead of exploding above the Earth. That's a terrifying thought. Some scientists disagree with this theory. They say the clear epicenter shows that something exploded above the Earth. They say that the trees wouldn't have fallen radially outward from an epicenter if something streaked across the sky and left the atmosphere. Will we ever really know what happened in Tunguska, Siberia, Russia on that June morning in 1908? What do you think? If you're listening on Spotify, scroll down and let me know what you think. Thanks for listening to today's episode of That's Ready Mysterious. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a review and follow That's Ready Mysterious to be updated about new episodes. Tune in next Tuesday for another thought-provoking tale.